Hi, this is Stuff with Kirby. Today I'm going to show you how to take an image you found online and make a fridge magnet out of it and then print it out on your 3D printer. This is the magnet that I made and I'm going to show you the steps that I did to do this. So we're going to start out with this image here I found on Google. <coughs> You can use any image you want, just make sure it's a good enough quality to start out with. So we're going to import this into Adobe Illustrator. Select the image, and we're going to click Image Trace. Now we're missing our tool panel on the side here, so we're just going to click uh, Image Trace Panel. I like to set the paths to high and the corners to high. I also go to overlapping for the method. Then we just click expand. Now I'm going to ungroup this. Alright, I don't need this box anymore, so I'll just click that and delete it. Now our outline looks like it disappeared to the state, but it's still there. We just have to make it a different color than white. So let's do that. You don't have to do this. It'll still be there when you export the file, but I like to see it. So, there you go. So, File, Save As then we'll pick SVG then we'll rename it something a little easier to remember than this Wisconsin sounds like a good idea to name it I just click OK I don't mess with anything here Alright, so now we're going to go into Fusion 360. We're going to right click and select Insert SVG. That's going to ask us to select our file, so let's go find it. There it is. Open. Select what plane you want it on. And I just click OK. Stop sketch. And now you notice our image is missing, so let's just home. And there it is. Now you just kind of want to move the cursor over it. Make sure that your letters are individual. That when you like highlight a letter, it doesn't highlight uh, the whole body. That would indicate there's an issue with the path, and you need to go back and fix it somehow. So all our letters look like they're all individual, which is good. Now we want to extrude just the state shape. Or, wait, no, I want to measure it first here. So let's just see what the size is. So we measure between two spots. Well, that's a little too big for me, 289 millimeters. So we're going to scale this down by 25%. So modify, scale. Now select your sketch. And then in the scale factor, what you want to scale it down to. So 25% would be 0.25. And now we'll just hit home again to find our sketch. And there it is. Now we'll extrude the state. So just hit E for extrude. Now I'm going to click it. I'm also going to click the inside parts of the letters that I need to extrude. I found that one part on the W isn't needed. It's kind of too small, so I just leave it. And we'll pick a height of 10 millimeters to start out with. So I'll just enter in 10. Alright, there you go. Now we have our outline. 
Now we need to add the bottom to it, a flat spot. So view our sketch again. And now we'll just select everything. And we'll go on negative five millimeter. So now you see we have the top and the bottom done. So we'll save this. So you just right click on the uh, in, in the browser there, save as STL. Let's put in a name for it. So I also need a flat bottom for another step we'll be doing in Mesh Mixer here. So I'm just going to go to the step where we extruded the top part and I'm just going to delete it. So now see we just have the bottom. It's kind of a nice part about Fusion 360, you can scroll back or just get rid of a feature you did. So now we're save as STL again. I'm going to select, we're going to call this bottom. Alright, so now we're in Mesh Mixer with the top part that had the, or the original file that had the bottom and the top together. We're going to go to Edit, Make a Pattern. For a pattern type, we want Random Primitives Surface. Uh, type, we want Subtract. And we want Clip to Surface. Oh, it's random primitive spheres, sorry there. So you see, we got a bunch of little circles all over it, kind of give it the cheese look. You can adjust your spacing. So I don't want as many little dimples all over it, so that looks like a good setting. You can kind of mess around with these. If you screw it up, just hit undo. It's kind of neat to try out, just to see all the different pattern types you could do. So that's good. We'll just update if you want to see a more 3D modeled image of it. So that looks pretty good. Our letters, the inside parts, none of them got clipped out. So that looks good. They're all still there. So we'll just say accept. The object browser pops up can close that. Now you see the bottom though kind of has a curve at the edges and I don't want that. I want a nice flat bottom. So we're going to do another step here to fix that. I'm going to go to edit, plane cut. I'm just going to move that down a little bit and slice off the bottom a bit. That looks about good. It's going to discard the bottom part that it cuts off. That's why we had made that bottom part earlier in Fusion and saved it. So I'll just accept. So it still looks good. See now we have more of a flat bottom. There are no curves on the edges. Do an analysis, just check for any issues. It looks like it's good, there's no little red pins all over it. So now we'll export this. We'll just call it Wisconsin Holes. Save it. So now we'll put these files into a Simplify 3D. Oh, so there you can see it. Let's zoom in a little here. So the bottom piece is a little too thick. 
but we can just change the scale of that here and so I think I'm gonna go with a two millimeter Z height for it or one millimeter let's see how it looks whoops yeah. turn off uniform scale put those back to a hundred so that looks like a good base we just click done so we'll see how it looks how it prints out so there's our preview looks like it's coming out good I don't see any issues now we'll just kinda go down the timeline make sure it did good that was good so now we need to do the letter so we'll insert the our SVG file again and so now that we knew that we scaled it before we can scale it right now to 25 percent save a step now I'll click home again to find it so there it is so now we're just gonna extrude just the letters out because we need those for to put into the magnet after we print it So I'll just go with 10 millimeters again. We can change that height later. So that looks pretty good. Now let's save that. So right click, save as STL. We'll call it letters. All right, so now we'll add that here to Fusion or to simplify 3D. And I can't really see it, so we're going to just kind of bring it up a little and move it over just to, to see how that the scale's right, that it, we didn't get the scale wrong and the letters are way bigger. So I'll just move it over here. Alright, so the letters look scaled good. They're not like way big or anything. Now we'll just uh, look at the side to, to make sure that the letters aren't too tall, that they're not going through the whole design so that looks pretty good as always you can also um, <clears throat> if you print out the letters and you find they're too tall you can always just uh, scale the Z height and print them out again and just keep a note So let's just look at the bottom here to make sure that they weren't poking through. I'm just gonna make the letters. So here you can see how you can make them a little smaller or bigger. So these letters, because when we did the file, they're uh, exact size as the opening, and those aren't going to fit in. The printer needs a little bit of tolerance for a part, and I've learned that with mine I need a 0.3 millimeter. So we're going to go to Edit Process Settings and go to the Horizontal Size Compensation feature, which is in Simplify 3D. And we're going to go to negative 0.3, so that's going to shrink the outside of the letter and the inside of the letter because if we just scale down the letter a bit then the holes in like the letter O would be too small so let's just see how the letters all slice so you just want to make sure they're flat to the bed since we had it changed it earlier so it looks good. Sometimes if you do that horizontal size compensation too much, there isn't enough of a path left to do the letter and you'll have incomplete letters. 
but this looks like it's pretty good. Got all of our letters, we can still see them. So I'm just measuring the size of the base here in Fusion, and I see that when I have it in my scrapbook cutting machine size, I need a height of 72.48. So I scaled it, and we just kind of arrange it. Select cut edge, so it'll cut around what's red. And then I just load up the adhesive paper on my cutting machine here, put it in. I need to adjust the blade height to what the software tells me to use. And then I just hit cut on the computer. So I sped this up a lot. It takes a few minutes to cut out. Once it's all cut out, I'll, I can just peel, the, peel it off. Now the little states, they just pop right out. So there's the print, 3D printed pieces we're going to stick together. And here I'm just kind of pressing them in. I'm using just a little block of metal that I had to push them in good. If you're having problems fitting it in, you could always try the horizontal size compensation again. I didn't use any glue. These all press fitted in good and stayed in. Now I put on the magnet. And ta-da, there it is.